If you've ever wondered what it will take to make the perfect VR headset, Meta's head of display systems, Douglas Landman, laid out what is needed in his presentation for SIGGRAPH 2022, which is a conference for computer graphics and interactive techniques. Here are the 10 challenges the VR industry needs to overcome to create the end-all be-all headset. Number one, of course, we need a higher resolution display. To hit close to the human eye, aka retina resolution, companies will need to target AK per eye, and with the pixel density of 60 ppd. Creating the displays to match those specs actually wouldn't be the biggest issue, but rather the access to PC power to run those displays on a headset will be the magic hurdle to overcome. Maybe cloud computing can make that happen or foveated rendering, but those have their own issues as well. Number two is a wider field of view to match the human eye, which is around 200 degrees. Along with the challenges of having enough pixels to cover all that view, you also have to take into account the form factor. If optics are flat and don't curve around your face, you end up with a bulkier headset like the ones that are on the market today, which this leads to the challenge of ergonomics. Looking at the Quest 2, it weighs just over 500 grams and is almost 8 centimeters thick. The biggest factor when it comes to bulk and weight is the optical displays. Right now, it's either super high resolution and high powered optical designs, which are bulkier, or smaller designs with less features. Doug believes holograms may be the magic bullet here, which we saw from Meta in the form of the Holocake 2 prototype. Up next is creating a high dynamic range display to more closely reflect our normal everyday environments. For example, an inside fluorescent light is nearly 13,000 nits, while the display of the Quest is about 100 nits. So we have quite a ways to go to reproduce at least indoor environments to make things look more solid and realistic with a light source that actually affects the dilation of our eyes dynamically. Challenge number fünf is facial reconstruction and recognition, so that what we do with our face in real life can be mimicked in the virtual world. If we really want to feel like we are present with someone else in a virtual environment, this is key, because, well, our faces are quite expressive and can reveal our emotions and hints at our inner thoughts. Creepy. Number six is the challenge of creating built-in vision correction for displays to help those who wear glasses to have a more seamless VR experience. So basically, with the perfect VR headset, you can hand it over to someone who has glasses and they will only need to fix something in the system software to adapt to their vision deficiency. If you have to deal with glasses while using your headset now, you should check out our sponsor VR Waves tailor-made prescription lenses for the Quest 2 and other headsets. Not only do they protect the built-in lenses on your headset from scratches, but they also correct for near and far-sightedness along with astigmatisms. So you don't have to mess around with fitting your glasses into your headset ever again. Side note, for those of you like me who don't need glasses, they also have blue light filter and anti-glare options to reduce eye strain during long VR sessions. You can grab your lenses today at vr-wave.store by filling out the online form with your prescription and you can get them shipped anywhere worldwide. And while you're at it, be sure to check out their other accessories such as their carrying cases, halo strap, and face cover. You can find a link to their store in the description below. Lucky number seven is creating a dynamic display with variable focus to reduce eye strain. It hinges on something called the vergence accommodation conflict, which is where your eyes physically move or deform and verge together to focus on something, but they move differently to focus at separate distances. The blurring that occurs when you focus at different distances are very important for natural visual responses. This is a problem with most modern VR displays today because they have a fixed optical focus, which means when you look at something in VR, now, especially if it is near you, everything becomes blurred, not just the background. This causes discomfort and eye strain, so the perfect VR display needs to shift with that change of focus. Of course, to achieve this, we need to combat challenge number eight, which is building precise eye tracking for everyone. Not all eyes are made the same. Pupils are different sizes and shapes. Eyelashes and eyelids also get in the way of precision tracking. So when relying on following a user's pupil and eye movement, it won't be a one-size-fits-all system. This is a huge challenge that can affect the image being out of focus or unexpected brightness levels, especially with most future VR displays basing everything graphically off of eye tracking. Another challenge that is tied to eye tracking is number nine, optical distortion correction. VR lens displays naturally create image distortion due to pupil swim that needs to be corrected in software to solidify immersion. And this will become an even bigger challenge with dynamic displays and eye tracking to overcome. And lastly, the final challenge is having high quality pass through that matches the perspective of our eyes exactly. This all relies on having compact cameras that can keep the form factor slim and keep the perspective true to what we see. Douglas has been working on this himself using machine learning to create a real-time color pass-through that is perspective correct. 
Well, Doug, that's a lot of challenges to overcome, but hopefully with all that meta money, we'll see the perfect VR headset in the near future. When do you think we're gonna perfect VR headsets? This decade, in the 2030s? Let me know in the comments below, and if you haven't, here's a video of all of Meta's prototypes for their future VR headsets. Thanks again for watching, and I'll catch you in the next quickie.